Or if incompetent to dwell on the meaning, let him at least continue the recitation of the mere mantra to keep his brahmana caste intact. An excellent brahmana must repeat the mantra a thousand times in the morning every day. Others shall repeat as many times as they can. In the midday, Gayatri shall be repeated a hundred times. In the evening, at least twenty times, along with Kshikshastaka, a set of eight prayers. He shall meditate on Vidyesha, Brahma, Vishnu, Isha, Jivatman, and Parameshwara, stationed in the twelve esoteric centers of the body, from Muladhar, the base of the spine, to the Brahmarandra, the mystical aperture in the crown of the head, as identical with Brahman, with the conception of Sohan, I am he, and continue the japa. He shall then meditate on them as stationed outside the body as well. From Mahat Tattva, the cosmic principle, there are a thousand extraneous bodies, each of which is to be passed by each mantra slowly, and the jiva must be unified with the Supreme. This is the principle on which the japa is based. This japa, for the sake of the extraneous bodies, is for two thousand times with the shikastika. This is the tradition regarding the japa. Repetition for a thousand times accords brahmahood, and that for a hundred times accords the region of Indra. Repetition of less number of times may guard the soul to a certain extent and bring about rebirth in the family of a brahmana. After the worship of the sun, the brahmana shall practice this every day. A brahmana who has completed 1,200,000 repetitions becomes a full-fledged brahmana. A brahmana who has not completed at least 100,000 repetitions of Gayatri is not authorized in Vedic rites. He shall follow these rules till he completes his 70th year. Afterwards, he can take to renunciation. After renunciation, he shall repeat the pranava 12,000 times in the morning every day. Omissions and deficiencies of one day must be made good the next day. If the omission is continued for a month, the atonement is 150,000 repetitions. If the omission extends beyond this, he shall take the order of sannyas afresh. Then only can the defect be fully effaced. Otherwise, he is sure to fall into Raurava, the terrible hell. Only the person who has a cherished desire shall endeavor for virtue and wealth, and not others. A brahmana shall seek salvation and practice the ways of realizing Brahman forever. From virtue, wealth is derived, and from wealth, enjoyment. Vairagya, non-attachment, is the outcome of enjoyment. That is to say, when one fully enjoys pleasures by means of wealth acquired by virtuous means, one comes to the stage of vairagya. If the enjoyment is through the wealth acquired by other means, the result is the increase of passion alone. Dharma is twofold, through sacrificial offering and through the body by performing ceremonial ablutions in a sacred river, etc. One can earn wealth through virtue and divine form through penance. A person freed from desire gains purity, and by purity he acquires knowledge. There is no doubt about it. In the ages of Krita, Treta, and Dvapara, penance was recommended for attaining dharma. 
But in the age of Kali, sacrificial offerings secure dharma for us. In the Krita age, knowledge was acquired through meditation. In the Treta, through penance. In the Dvapara, through sacrifice. Now in the Kali age, it is through the worship of deities. The fruit is in accordance with the nature of merit and sin. Deficiency, increase, decrease, etc. are due to the difference in the articles employed and the part of the body and items of rights. Evil is a violent character and virtue is of pleasant nature. A person becomes miserable due to evil and secures happiness on account of virtue. Bad conduct leads to misery and good conduct to happiness. Hence, it is the duty of everyone to acquire virtue for the sake of worldly enjoyment as well as salvation. If anyone regularly offers sufficient material means to a brahmana with four members in his family, he will remain in Brahmaloka for a hundred years. The rite of Chandrayana performed a thousand times yields Brahmaloka. It is the duty of a Kshatriya to establish and sustain a thousand families. It yields Indraloka to him. If he maintains ten thousand families, he attains Brahmaloka. According to scholars in the Vedas, a man attains the region of that deity in meditation of whom he makes charitable gifts. A man devoid of wealth shall endeavor to accumulate penance and austerities. Everlasting happiness is achieved by pilgrimage to holy centers and penances. Now I shall expound the mode of acquiring wealth through pure and lawful means. A brahmana shall earn wealth without cringing or exerting himself too much. He can accept monetary gifts and fees for presiding over sacrifices duly performed. A kshatriya shall earn wealth by valorous exploits, and a vaishya by means of agriculture and cattle breeding. Charitable gifts of wealth acquired by lawful means alone are attended with good results. Salvation is achieved by everyone by the acquisition of perfect knowledge with the blessings of the preceptor. Salvation is realization of one's own real form and perfect bliss. O Brahmanas, men realize all these things only if they cultivate the association of good people. A householder shall make charitable gifts of everything, like money, grain, etc. A person who desires permanent welfare for himself shall give fruit, grain, or other articles to Brahmanas, especially when the need for the same arises. Water shall always be given to the thirsty. Food shall be given to the hungry and the sick. Gifts of food are of four types. Field, unhusked grain or seed, uncooked food, and cooked food. A giver of food receives half the merit of the receiver, which he accumulates till the time that food is digested, or as long as the glory of Lord Shiva reaches his ears. The receiver of a gift must expiate for his sin by means of austerities or by making gifts to others. Otherwise, he will fall into the row of a hell. Everyone shall set apart a third of his wealth for dharma, another third for vridhi, flourishing, and the rest for his bhoga, enjoyment. With the part intended for dharma, he shall perform the three rites of virtue, Nitya Dharma, daily prayers, etc., Naimitika Dharma, occasional acts of piety, and Kamya, specific rites for fulfillment of desires. By means of the second part, he shall increase his wealth. By utilizing the third part, he shall enjoy with restraint in pure and wholesome ways. One-tenth of the wealth acquired by agricultural operations must first be given in charity before making the threefold division, to wipe off the sin. He can utilize the rest as mentioned before. 
otherwise he shall fall into Raurava. Or he is sure to be evil-minded, hastening towards his own certain ruin. Sensible persons acquiring much wealth by way of usury or trading activities must likewise give away a sixth of that wealth in charity before making the threefold division. Excellent brahmanas accepting monetary gifts from decent people shall give away a fourth of that wealth in charity. They shall likewise give away half in charity in case of an unexpected windfall. If a brahmana accepts a monetary gift from an indecent fellow, he shall give away the entire amount in charity. A defiled gift shall be thrown into the sea. It is more creditable if one invites persons and makes gifts to them. One's own enjoyment gains by it. A man must give to others what they beg of him according to his ability. If a thing requested for is not given, he will be indebted to that extent even in his next birth. A sensible person shall not proclaim others' faults. O Brahmanas, whatever is seen or heard should not be spitefully repeated. An intelligent man shall not speak words wounding the hearts of others. For achieving prosperity, he shall perform sacred rites in the fire at dawn and at dusk. Persons unable to perform the same, both the times, shall do so once, worshipping the sun and the fire duly. Raw rice, other food grains, ghee, fruits, bulbous roots, cooked food soaked in ghee for sacrificial rites, all these things shall be duly used as prescribed in the sacred text. Stali paka offerings of cooked food in the vessel itself, shall be performed at the stipulated time in the traditional manner. If there is no havya, cooked rice offering, the main sacrifice alone shall be performed. Thus the daily rites have been narrated. These shall be performed always, or repeated muttering of mantra alone, or the worship of the sun shall be performed. Those who seek welfare of the soul shall do like this. A person who seeks wealth shall also do likewise. All persons devoted to Brahma Yajna, worship of gods, worship of fire, reverence to preceptors and gratification of Brahmanas, deserve to attain heaven.